Nick Collins here on the Phil Collins tour. We're here in Berlin at the Olympia Stadion. I think that's the right pronunciation. Um, doing the kit run through for the kit that we're using. We've been doing this tour for probably, we started in June 2017. So we've been using this kit the whole time. It's a Gretsch USA Custom with just, you know, white finish. There's only a certain amount of finishes you can do with this kit. It's either the white or the classic black that um, Dad had. Um, you know, a few others, but you kind of can't really get too crazy with it. But this finish I really love because whenever the lights go on, it really kind of reflects it really well. But we'll start with the drums themselves. Um, so these are all the sizes that um, my dad used um, because you know, kind of have to do the sound. And uh, at home, I, I, I do use some of the concert toms, but not all the time. But with this, is you kind of have to. This is the 8 inch, 12, no, 8, 10, 12, 15, 16, 18. And 14 inch snare drum, I think it's by a 7x14. And then this is a 13 inch. So this is just a standard Gretsch snare. You know, this is the hand hammered chrome. Um, which is kind of side snare stuff. We're not doing much of it on this tour, um, on this leg, just for the song selection. We haven't done that many with that one. This is a great sounding snare. We were we were using Noble and Cooley, but Gretsch, just you know, the color and just everything is just really great. Um, and we do, we we use the Diplomat on this one, on this uh, on this head, just because it's got that kind of. Crack to it, and <laughs> the ambassadors on all the other ones, which are thin heads, but if you kind of put heads that are too heavy on these drums, they don't really sound the way they should. And then I forgot about the bass drum, is a 20, 20 inch, it's a really small bass drum, so when I'm, you know, when there's no subs on, it kind of sounds a bit weak, but as soon as this gets turned on and I've got the um, Porter and Davies thrown, it just gets really massive. But it's good, it's got the punch for this kind of, um, for the set that we're doing. And um, just got an ambassador smooth white head on it. And actually the front head um, has barely got any of it on. It's only kind of got the kind of outline and the rest has just got the pillows and everything. And um, yeah, and then an ambassador X on the, on the snare drum. Uh, really thin heads, but it's kind of just the best the best thing for the way it sounds, an ambassador on the other snare as well. So then we're all using all DW hardware with the DW rack that they that we had because the thing with this kit is it's the way it's placed so complex that when you're just using real stands, it really starts to kind of you know every every time you set it up, it's set up a bit differently. You can't really get it to be consistent. So this rack is just easy places it on and then it's all perfect. Your Sabian cymbals um, start here. We've got this little stack, which we only added when we started doing Australia back in January uh, of this year. So we've got a little ozone, a, I believe that's a 10 inch, and then a little stack on top, uh, which I think is just an AA, you know, AA splash. All the crashes and the ride that I'm using are artisan cymbals. This is, I believe, a 16, I believe, crash. Then two 19s, these two, a 20 inch crash, and then another 16, I think. And then this is the Chad Smith 21 inch Holy China, which is my favorite part of the kit. Even though I don't get to use it that much, um, when I do use it, it's enjoyable. Um, and then AAX Accelerator Hi-Hats, 14 inch. Um, DW9000 pedals, um, which, you know, just reliable. The, actually, the other day, one of the bass drum beaters snapped in the middle of the song, but, you know, it's all right. I love the, the pedals. They're just smooth and good response that I get. And it's kind of one of those pedals where you can just set them up and they work straight away. You don't need to kind of start adjusting all the tensions and all that. It's pretty straight up, easy to work with. Um, Mark sticks I'm using you know as my name on it it was when I got the sticks it was I wanted it to be based off the um, Steve Gadd Vic Firth stick just with a bit more weight and a bit more um, length to it um, 
and then we kind of came up with these. I used to have, when I first started doing it a few years ago, it had the, I don't even know what kind of tips it had, but it was just going through the heads, just denting them every single time. So these are good, and they last, you know, depending on the night, they either last the whole show or they, you know, break. I was using the fire grain ones, um, but when you kind of consistently, consistently use them, it just kind of stains all the heads, all the symbols. And I forgot about the ride. The ride is a 21 inch artisan ride. Um, they're all brilliant finishes, which you know, adds when all the lights come down, it looks really good. And I love the ride because the thing about the ride is obviously it's got a nice, you know, bell. To it. But also when you hit it as, you know, when you go ahead and hit it, even as a crash, we do this big drum duet. Uh, during the set, and it's just it just sounds really good when it's mic'd up, even as a crash. And then, so all of these are concert tums, and they don't have the bottom head, kind of the classic Phil Collins sound. You know, you, on certain songs, on certain songs it comes out. You know, eh. You know that you don't you don't need the whole sound, but on songs like In the Air and all that kind of stuff, you need it. And if you were playing on any other kind of drum set, it would sound pretty pretty terrible. <laughs> And then, back here we've got the Roland SPDX pad, which for this set that we've been doing um, on this European leg in all these stadiums, we haven't really been using it, because um, we were using it on the song Can't Turn Back the Years, um, which we're not doing this leg, but we were doing it on every other one. And we did use it on One More Night as well, which is just, you know, it's, it was tough at first to kind of get used to playing the drums and thinking as a drum machine, not as a drummer, to not, you know, without doing any fills. And to really, you're, you're playing, my bass drum is here, so it's bass drum, hi-hat, snare, and then all the toms, you know, whatever. It's like an 808 kind of sound. And just make, really staying consistent with it without, you know, with just your hands, with no pedals is, was a challenge. But now it's it's pretty good and it's, it's pretty reliable, always works. Um, but I don't really get too crazy with this. I know drummers who have a whole show program through their SPDX. I, I don't really know how to use it. I just kind of have this sound and it's all really I use. And obviously we just have a random metronome that we have. And um, I think, yeah, that's about it. Uh, what's the, about the symbol holders? Symbol holders, they're just the standard DW ones DW, yeah. that come. Um, I think they're just reliable because, I mean, although they kind of spin off once you've got them at the right tension, I haven't really had any problems with it. And just to me, the DW stands are the best, best ones to use, just because I've had, I've used plenty of stands, and you know, all of a sudden you just have one lean in. But also, them being on a rack makes it much easier. And, um, because of the angles that they're at. You know, back home, I use a kit with um, my stuff and my band, which is just a kind of standard bottom kit. I, I don't have a 26 inch kick, I have a 24, an 18 by 24, and then a 14, 16, 18. But all the stands are straight up, they don't, they're not at an angle. This is pretty a com complex setup as far as the cymbals go, just because I'm trying to fit them in with all the toms, that it's just more, it's easier on a rack. But, you know, we've, I haven't had any problems with it, and it, and it's a great sounding kit, especially when it's mic'd up and we start playing the set, especially on some of the songs against Soul Odds. As soon as that first fill hits, it's this, this drum set that has that sound. And, um, you know, when we, I, I, we do, during the drum duet, I go out front with Richie Garcia, the percussionist, on, on the road with us and my dad, and we do a bit of a cajon thing, and that's just an LP standard cajon. Not too fussy about that. And, yeah, I think that's about it. Cool. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah. This is the sampler rack we used uh, initially on the 2007 Genesis Turn It On Again tour uh, for Phil's drums. And uh, it went into storage after that tour. And we were, when we were going we to do this tour, we got it out and everything worked fine. And we, I looked into different samplers, uh, Oasis and everything else. and. Uh, for what we needed it for, this is this works fine. Just three drums, three samples, and there you go. It's done. Yeah. It works fine though. This is it's just old. <laughs> this has been this has been this little clock this thermometer has been in the rack since the the uh, We Can't Dance Store with Genesis in 93 and the light still works.
Huh. <laughs> I find that incredible. What was that, 30 years ago? That's a piece of history in there, yeah. right there. And the sampler, how many tours has it actually seen? How many tours? Yeah. Just Genesis in 2007 and okay. this. Okay. And that's all. Right. Yeah. I was going to take it home at one point, then I just, you know. <laughs> Okay. Didn't want to pay shipping. CS5. It's been MIDI uh, modified, so it's possible to play this through MIDI. But we brought it along on this tour just in case we need to resample the Simmons sounds that we use. But so far, it's, we haven't had to turn it on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot for this. Ta da!